sports coach for the in the NFL, all right? You get these great athletes, man. Here's the plays, go play, go do it, all right? And then we have some old mention names, so I'm not calling out teams and position coaches in the NFL, but guys come back from the NFL, I'm like, man, they don't teach me nothing. They just make sure I know the plays. They don't really coach me anything, all right? And so, man, I just kind of talk about that. I have my own pet peeves. Coach Winnie has his own pet peeves, all right? And so, man, hey, you know what? I have a boss. I'm going to make sure his pet peeves are taken care of, and I have, I have mine too, all right? So my guys know him really well. Don't have a lot, but, you know, we talk about it. It's so talking about habits, all right? Repetition is the father of learning. Repetition is the father of learning. All right, this next little clip I share with my guys a lot. That's another thing I'll tell y'all. Like, man, there's some good stuff online. You can snip it, I guess steal it, I don't know, all right? But, uh, and use it and show it to your guys. And you'll see a few things here, all right? This is from um, Emmanuel Sanders. I was, a, I was a rookie, undrafted. I played the last four games of my rookie year. Uh, we did not make the playoffs, had a long off season. It was awesome, it was, it was a, we were married for a year. We had, man, vacation, had a great time in the off season, trained a lot. I was like, here I go, I'm about to make it, man. I played the last four games of my rookie year. Here we go. And then they drafted Emmanuel Sanders and Antonio Brown with Pittsburgh. I never saw the field again. They're better than me, straight up. All right, but this is a, uh, Emmanuel talking to some of the guys he was training with. Repetition, the fall of This morning when you woke up, what was the first thing you did? Did you learn that? You learned that by doing it over and over and over to the point that the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is what? I'm going to brush my teeth. Somebody told you that and you taught yourself that. So when you out here, Matt, and Matt telling you, hey, you run a house. I heard him tell you you run a house. That's because that's not the technique. That's not gonna get you to the NFL. That's not gonna get you a rainbow. That's not gonna get you a Ferrari. That ain't gonna get you a mama house. Because you ain't trying to master the technique. But you was because you kept moving. You kept coming back. You said, that was right, Coach Matt. Let me do it again. 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 You trying to master the technique. So animal. Just like you can master the technique, you can create bad habits too. If you do bad habits over and over and over and over again, guess what's gonna make you? A bad football player. A bad football player. All right, and so I love that, man, kind of going back to habits, all right, technique. And so, man, if you can be doing something incorrectly and you do it over and over again, you're not getting corrected on it, guess what? That becomes a habit. That becomes a habit, all right? And so, man, we gotta, we gotta coach these things right, all right? And so for me, real quick, if I could just stop, just kind of for me, I'm going to talk about kind of a plane, like taking off, man. The takeoff is huge. The landing is, is super important, right? In between, right, in phase, all right, you have some turbulence going on. So I'm going to talk about releases, all right? I'm going to talk about just a few releases, all right? I'm going to talk about some break points, some break point drills, all right, some ball drills kind of in conjunction with that. And then a little bit of in phase hand fighting, all right, when it comes to our receiver play. So those kind of you know, the way to think about it, all right, for me is I was just kind of think about what I want to share with y'all today. All right, now releases, all right, this is Dion. This is at one of the little camps, all right, before he was, uh, you know, a head coach, all right, one of these Under Armour camps. He's talking to these DBs, all right, now listen up. So he's saying if a receiver's like this, when, when you're pressing them, all right, we're coming for you. So he's talking to his corners. Can I get them hands down and up? First thing the hands down, you want to go down, then up, and try to set yourself. So you catch them like this, I want to see you try to choke. All right? Or if I see right here, and I know what's right here, you rush him. Watch, coach. The first time down. The first time down, he's going to run. He can't move the first time. He got to go right there. Then he got to try to back. All right? Or oh, if you catch that first time, So I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on from there. But listen, so just so y'all know, and this is important, all right, it's a little thing, all right? But what happens is your receivers, okay, when I teach them, man, they have their stance, right? And so I'm not going to talk about a stance to start necessarily, but just so you know, man, like if I have open <coughs> access as a receiver, man, I want to be in a sprinter stance. Like I want to have the, the right kind of, you know, distance between my feet, the right stagger, right, the right base, so that when the ball is snapped, there's no ways to move it and I can explode out of there. But once when I have an, a restricted release and I get press, right, my chance has, to, my stance has to change. So it goes from a sprinter stance, right, to what I do is I bring that back foot up, all right, and then I widen it. And, it, and it's different. I'm not gonna tell you how much, it, it just, what I want you to do is, man, I want you to get a little bit more balance in your stance when it comes to releases. All right, and, and a pet peeve of mine is, and you heard him talking about it, 
Those guys, listen, if you want to be in your sprinter stance, open access release, free release, and you want to cross your arms up, I'm not going to be too big of a stickler on that. I'm okay with that. We used to have our arms down about our size. There's not a whole lot difference from this to this. Whatever. All right, you want to have some swag with it, whatever. I don't want to be resting. Sometimes they get tired and they want to be like this, right? We're putting that, that front hands on the knee and kind of resting. No, sir, that ain't it. All right, but man, I'm okay, I'm okay with this. But once I get pressed, if I don't have my hands up, ready to fight, that's a problem. So as a, as a receiver, if I have press, then I need to be thinking like a boxer. A boxer, don't, they don't stand like this and fight. They what? They have good balance. They have good balance and they have their hands up. If you're not protecting that face, you're knocked out, right? So I'll say that. That's important when it comes to releases. All right, so less stagger, a little bit better base so that I can what? So I can then bring my feet up close to parallel, all right, and be able to what? Cross you over to work a release. All right, and I'll say this. I had a coach ask me last time, what do you think about having your players, you know, they're getting too wide outside their framework? I don't care when it comes to releases, right? Let your, let your receivers be creative Right? And listen, a crossover, Allen Iverson, I mean, you have to have your feet like this to cross them over. You gotta, you gotta put that ball between the legs and cross them over. Right? So the, the base to me doesn't really matter when it comes to releases. Now, break points, it does. Break points, I have a cylinder. Break points, I better be within my framework. Otherwise, I got a false step, I'm slipping. All right, does that make sense? So the releases, no, man, you gotta move the defender. We'll talk more about that. But I wanna talk about that uh, when it comes to stance. Now, all right, when it comes to releases, I have a after, after uh, we get done here tonight, we'll have a breakout. We can talk about day one stuff, all right? Last year, I kind of talked about some day one stuff, all right? What I want us to be thinking about, I mean, as you're, lead, as you're leading your skill guys, all right? Your tight ends, I flex them out. Your receivers, heck, your running backs, you put them out wide, all right? Man, you have, I want to be able to put my guys in situations they're going to experience in the game, all right? And so there's, there's three kind of kinds of corners that my receivers can, can, can know when they're watching film what they're going to go up against. All right, three cons. All right, you have a bully corner. All right, maybe you have, some of y'all heard this before. You, you've got a bully corner. All right, this is a guy that's maybe a little bit bigger. All right, maybe got some long arms, maybe strong and tough. All right, maybe some of y'all are thinking of this. Maybe not as fast. Maybe they want to stop you at the line of scrimmage. They're going to crowd the line, and they're going to try to cap you right on the snap. I call that a bully. All right, and there's certain releases you, you use off of that. Maybe you, you really work a, a speed release against that guy. Maybe, hey, dip and rip, get away from him. All right, maybe you, maybe you do a slam and go. I think I had that, I added that kind of late to my, my cutoff. Maybe you get physical with him, change it up on him. All right, maybe you do a quick slide. I have a slide I'll show you. All right, then you've got a motor corner. Some of those motor corners are guys that are really fast, quick, and they want to beat you to the spot. Bully, motor, all right? We had a couple guys that are motor guys that, that prided themselves in beating you to the spot. Well, then those are guys you move. Those are guys that you work a V release, all right? You work a squirt release, all right? You take him, you move him this way, know that he's gonna react so that you can take him back inside, right? You know he's going to be reactive, that's a motor. And then you have a mirror, a mirror corner, all right? Those are those kind of basketball soft technique. Those are the, probably the hardest to, to, uh, to beat because they're patient. They're gonna lose ground, they're gonna stay over the top. They're patient, they're not, they're not quick reactors. All right, and so you all probably have DBs. Now the best can kind of change it up on you, all right? And so they, they use different techniques, okay? And so those are the kind of the corners we talk about. Well, so for me, man, it's like, what we're seeing a lot more of is just mirror and more patience at the corner position, all right? And so do you work it? Do you work having to create a new line of scrimmage? Do you, do you work release techniques where you're not just on the snap doing this? No, because guess what? The corner may start right there, and on the snap, he's two rows back as you work down the field. He's losing ground with you. So you've got to put them in these situations, okay? So this is working mirror press, all right? So I'm going to show you a couple images here and kind of talk through it, man, and, and, uh, and give you as much as I can and kind of explain. Now, all right, what we did here, we were playing Ohio State one year, and so... What I did was I wanted them kind of early in practice to know, okay, listen, all right, you're going to be playing, you're going to be playing, this guy over here, all right, is more of your bully guy. So you'll see this corner, all right, my GA at the time, he ain't going to lose much ground, and so you're going to see them be able to work a, a, a quick little uh, single move, all right, a little single move. And I call it two quicks, so it's just one-two, all right? I'm not going to cover the single today. So he's going to be able to work his release at the line of scrimmage. 
All right, the other corner they played with was more of a mirror guy. And so I told them, now I mixed it up later in practice so they didn't know what they're gonna get. All right, so on this side, this is the mirror corner. All right, so just you can see here, okay? All right, so as you can see, bully, the two, have my hands ready to fight, my hands are up. All right, here, create a new line of scrimmage. So what does that mean? Take the air out of it. There's air. He's gonna create your air by, by dropping back. All right, so take the air out of it. All right, create a new line of scrimmage. All right, little single move on the move, bam. All right, and then what I try to do is one, I always have a football in, included. I always wanna be throwing passes to my receivers. They should be catching tons of passes, pre-practice, post-practice, in practice. All right, and then a lot of times I'll try to have a second level release. All right, a second level release. You gotta be able to execute a single move, a double move, all right, a V release on the move, second level. That's important, especially for your slots, right? A lot of times they're not getting pressed. They got, they got an overhang, all right? They got a second level defender over them, all right? So being able to, to execute a, a, a release on the move. All right, so you can see there, all right? Again, bully, all right, mirror, all right? Attacking and coming off the ball, because if I make my move right now at the line of scrimmage versus a mirror corner, well then what? I made my move, he's soft, now I'm gonna run, he's gonna beat me to the point. He's gonna, cut, he's gonna, he's gonna uh, beat me to the point, he's gonna choke me out, I can't get past him, all right? So I wanna be able to take the air out of it right here, okay? All right, now another thought, all right, another thought. What if what you anticipate, all right, is a <coughs> corner who is a typically more of a bully guy, maybe a little bit more flat footed, all right, but good corners are taught to change up their technique, all right. We've got a couple of great ones right now. I mean, I think one is a first rounder, Nate Wiggins. I mean, he, he, he's a great player and he's done a great job this spring of changing up his technique, all right. And so there's times where he kind of plays around with his feet. He'll get behind you. Your eyes are inside the ball, and he'll, he'll be ready to quick jam you. And you're not seeing him move his feet and stagger his feet. All of a sudden, bam, he chucks you out. He quick jams you. Well, then guess what? He's going to present the same thing, and then he's going to, right? They're going to change it up. All right, so what, so what I do is, is, guys, let's be thinking about this. Let's say, all right, let's, let's work a release. Let's work a double move. All right, let's work a double move. He's, he, he's tied on you. All of a sudden, you work the double move? Well, crap, now he's lost ground, so what do you do? You better transition, and then what? Work again, all right? So, so what we do is we gotta release into a reset, all right? So just kind of working them, put them, get them in these situations, have them visualize it, and then work it, all right? This one's not the best rep, all right? Kind of just comes off, looks more like just a mirror press release to me right here. I don't love that. This is okay, this is actually Drew Sweeney, Coach Sweeney's middle son, just got married. All right, one of my favorite guys, man. Great soul, great spirit to him, all right? Hard worker, you know, problem is he's, you know, 5'9 and ran a you know 4'7. Alright? Right, don't tell his dad I said that. But but man, awesome, awesome. This is pretty good right here. Alright? Bam bam. Alright. Attack him again. The next rep's gonna be a little bit better right here. This is Bo Collins, alright, one of my juniors. Okay. You can see right here. Ready? Bye-bye. Alright? All of a sudden the corner starts to lose ground. Alright, here we go. Take it again and then one two. Have the hands ready. Alright, have the hands ready. Bam. Attack him. One two. Take the air out of it. It's a pretty good rep, all right? And then again, just kind of work it over the shoulder or high point. Sometimes my managers aren't the best, all right? I'm not great either, all right? I coach receivers, my quarterbacks. All right, um, right here, okay? That's okay, not great, all right? This next one, this is Antonio. It's my freshman last year, uh, freshman All-American man, great player, getting better every day. One, two, all right? All right? Work again. And again, like it, it it, it doesn't seem that difficult, but you man, you have to be thinking and having these conversations with your guys, and you got to put them in these situations of practice, all right, for them to be ready in, in game, okay? All right, so there's an example there. All right, there's some practice clips. We'll talk through it, okay? That's Sammy Watkins. All right, you good? You got it. All right, this is Sammy. All right, and, you know, recruit great players. That's that's always helpful. Uh, guys that can run really fast and uh, you know don't do a, a whole lot and just DB can't touch them. All right, Chris Chancellor in here somewhere. I'm sorry, bro. I mean, you know, uh, PT, one of my former teammates, coaches corners in here. All right, don't listen too closely to my presentation. All right, all right, but right here, man, just pretty simple. All right, like you know, taking the ear out of it. This guy's about a yard and a half off. All right, quick single shoot. Doesn't have to use hands. Burp step. Get back in there. I'll, I'll, I'll use some terminology and I'll explain as I go. All right, another one, a little double. All right, one, two. All right, getting getting vertical. We have an orange line we paint on the field. We call that the max line. That's a couple yards outside the bottom edge of the numbers. All right, that's kind of the, the, the widest you want to be. All right, if you could be on the numbers, that'd be awesome. All right, 
I love filming the back view on, on, uh, on our one-on-ones, but this is Mike Williams, first rounder, phenomenal player, all right? A little bit uh, heavier jam right here. Mark Fields, good player for us as well. All right, but what I love here, okay, so, so write this down because to me, like, when I talk about releases, every single release eventually is going to have a vert step. Vert step, like get vertical. All right, but so use terminology. All right, use terminology that's succinct, that makes sense, that's, that's repetitive, that they hear a lot. And so my guys know, like, they, they think about it and we drill it, but how quickly can you get vertical? Right? If I work a release, and some of y'all know, all right, some of you high school guys that you coach are good players, and they can come to college, but they're so used to being faster than everybody, they work a release, and they run the arc, and they're just going to outrun you. All right? Not here. Not here, bro. You can't, you can't run the arc because they're going to beat you to the spot eventually, and sooner rather than later. So, man, you've got to be able to, to sense a soft shoulder in a DB once you move them, and you better, you better knock a hole through the shoulder. That's one thing that Coach Winnie said to us all the time. You better knock a hole through the shoulder. All right, and get vertical ASAP. All right, so bless you. So I want to be able to, to, to play on my insteps. I want to be able to play on my insteps, the inside of my foot, have my knee inside of that instep, and be able to quickly get vertical. So watch this. All right, he's going to release. Going to work a little double. All right, now watch right here. This next step, right? He's stepping under here. <laughs> this next step, he better get vertical and get what? North and south. You may not be able to stack them right now initially. Right here, you're not quite stacked. But you want to get what? Vertical. And give yourself a <coughs> two-way go. All right? Because watch. Watch what happens to Mark. Okay? Watch what happens to Mark right here. Watch him. So now he's vertical. He just got his vert step. Man, he's, he is up and down. He's vertical. So watch Mark. Ready? Look at him. Watch he, Now, look. Do you see how he's leaning? Right? He's leaning, and then at this point on his, really with the release, it's a seven-step band gate, becomes a five-step band gate on a release. So if you have steps, you have to make sure you guys understand timing. A seven-step band gate is open access. If I've got a press corner, after that release, there's my two steps, I better get five. Make sense? You guys need to know that. A seven-step band gate gets you 10 yards. If you're pressed, you ain't getting 10. You're getting eight. Timing. It's a timing route. It's a three-step plant throw. All right, they gotta know that. All right, they gotta know quick game. They gotta know drop back pass timing, especially for conversion routes. Go balls. When do you get your eyes back? You get my eyes back. We get our eyes back at six to seven yards on quick game. We get our eyes back on a conversion route. Go ball. All right, at about ten to twelve. That's early. All right. With Coach Riley, we're getting our eyes back a little bit later. We can really know our guys freaking run. And I'm tracking how often are you stacking the defender? I keep track of stack wins, and I keep track of 50-50 balls. All right, so if you want your guys, and again, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. If you want, you know, Coach Winnie says, you get what you inspect, not what you expect. If I make something a priority and I talk about it a lot and I put it on a board, they think about it. So guess what, this year we're talking about stacking jokers. Man, I wanna, I wanna stack a corner. If you stack a corner, I make a note of that, I have a grade sheet, you get points for stacking a corner. You get points for it, even if you don't get the ball. So guess what, they, after the game, they're going to have all these points told, and you know what? They might have two catches, might have one, but man, they got 40-something points because they had elite releases, they had, they had an elite route, they had a, a key block, they had all these things that get points for, all right? But anyway, all right, so listen, but listen, if Mike does not get vertical right here and he stays on this trajectory, what's he going to do? He's going to be on his back with him the whole way, right? And he's going to run the route for you, okay? But a, a two-way go getting vertical makes him get vertical and it allows him to plant and separate all right this right here is nice okay i got a, I got a this is aj terrell you heard his name coach piece my aj terrell first rounder all right this is joseph and all right i believe he'll be a drafted guy this year but man this is a nice little quick little single all right quick little single but guess what he's flat-footed right now he did a great job his technique he changed it up all the time but he's flat-footed so i can make my release at the line of scrimmage i don't have to worry about what taking the air out of it there's no air all right, so quick single. Watch, watch his feet. All right, so we, we drill this in our singles. Watch, the left foot comes first. It's a quick, two quicks, quick, quick. Bam. Uh-oh, let's go back. Yep, crossover, quick it back. All right, and you can see him. Uh, right, and then another thing that y'all need to do with your, with your guys early on, get a bag, all right? You're standing behind it, and literally, you're working a single, all right? Peak drill. Have them peek around the bag to be able to see. You can hold a number up. All right, make sure they're peeking you, and then they're walking around the bag. Okay, so you're, and, and listen, 
what when it comes to uh, shampoo, all right? What's the what's the most of athletes <coughs> branding? What kind of shampoo uh, is out there, like commercials or whatnot? Head and shoulders. So I'll say shampoo, man. I got guys that they, they want to use their feet, but they're just, you know, they have no hips. All right. I say, man, get some shampoo. So hey, head and shoulders. You better, you better get loose with it. All right. Some of you white guys in here dance like this a lot. You better practice. You better get, you better get loose with it. Because as a whiteout, you ain't gonna be successful doing that. All right. You better be able to get loose with it. All right. So man, have some fun with them. Head and shoulders, man. Head and shoulders shampoo. All right. So he gets vertical pretty good right there. All right, bottom of the numbers, fade to the ball, good throw and catch, all right? Uh, this is pretty cool. These are the Charger Scouts watching Mike Cordray Tankers, who was a great player as well. All right, but now you got Cordray, who's playing a little bit of a mirror technique. So Mike plays foot fire, works foot fire, sees him losing a little bit of ground, takes the air out of it, and it's a subtle double. Very subtle. Man, there's a second one. All right. And then they drafted him first round. All right. So that was a good practice for Mike, for sure. All right. Uh, love this, man. Renfro just was natural. I mean, he showed up being able to do this. All right. Now, he has an in route. He has an, uh, an under route, a little five-yard in. Um, you, would prefer, <coughs> you would prefer an inside release. All right. But watch this now. He comes off. This dude's scared. He's going to back up. All right, but well, watch the little double move. One, two. See it? All right, a double move on the move. One, two. And then, you know what? You can't win inside, that's fine, but what? Vertical threat. Everything's a go until it's not. All right, at Clemson, we play low to lower. Low to lower. We don't play high. We play low to lower. All right, but man, a vertical threat right here gets him a turn of sips. You've won. He has the throw by ready. You got to work throw by drill. And then not only throw by, all right, right when you throw by, it's bam, bam, but what? Other arms ready to work, all right, and win. Tight swim, okay? So there you go there. You know, stay flat, get friendly. I'm talking about getting friendly, right, with the quarterback. All right, this is a nice little double move right here by Cornell. Was a backup his whole career, man. Really stepped up for us, had some injuries in 2020. Had a big year, man, fifth round draft pick to Kansas City. All right, coming off, one, two. Very subtle. One, two, all right? Andrew Booth, man. Uh, what, what round was he, second? Second round, I think. Booth was first, he was second. All right, now, not great, but look, he don't have a bang eight. He's got a post corner, quick little nod. Eyes tell lies, stripe, stripe him, and then take it high angle, all right? That's another thing, corner routes. All right, corner routes suck on air. So tell him, hey, you gotta tell him, hey, front pylon, front pylon angle, all right? If you are running the corner and you feel that he's stacked, all right, man, what do you do? You take it high. You take it to that front pylon if you're outside the 25. All right, if you have a corner route, and what I like is sometimes I say even, or if, you're, if you're even, you're leaving. Man, if, if he's even, I love throwing by and coming out flat and getting that ball and getting some yak. All right, because that can be a tough ball to complete. He's right here on you. It's a hard ball to throw and catch right there. So that's my opinion. Um, pretty good there. You know, this is cool. I mean, this is from practice. I'm pretty similar here, all right? Deion Kane working a little single, all right, a little, little two quicks, right? Back foot comes first, one, two, all right? Now get vert right there's your vert step, all right? Track meet, hold your line, hold your line, all right? Stack them, fade to it, right? Those fades, man, once that ball, if you're running, all right, one thing to teach, man, chin to shoulder, close the shoulder. If you open up the shoulder, you're giving him surface area to push you out wide. I want to keep my shoulder closed, fight with my inside hand. If you ever on a go route, take your outside hand as a receiver and fight, you're wrong. I'm leaving my outside arm free all the time. And I'm fighting with my inside hand. I'm going to go chin to shoulder, eyes to the sky. So listen, you got to go route. All right? You got to go route. The worst thing you can do is look back at your quarterback. The ball's in the air. I'm expecting the ball in the air all the time. All right, so I got, chin, I got chin to shoulder, eyes to the sky. I'm locating the ball. If I don't see the ball, I'm tracing the sky to my guy. And then maybe the ball's thrown elsewhere. All right, but man, I always expect the ball thrown to me. I'm that dude. I'm that guy he's throwing the ball to every time. All right, I'm that guy. All right, so uh, that's, that's important. And if you let that ball get over your outside eye, that's a hard, you're going to miss it. You lose it. So I want to have late hands, high hands. I want to fade to it and catch it over my right front shirt pocket, my left front shirt pocket. All right, I don't want to get too wide outside of my eye, my outside eye. Okay, so again, I'm just throwing out some, some, <coughs> some coaching points we talk about 
at Clemson, and then this is the same little deal, all right, right here with Dion. Pretty similar, all right? Pretty similar, bam, all right? Had the hand ready, bam, all right? Now vert step, and then just get you a nice pretty ball, fade to it, all right? Some, some plays from the game, all right? <laughs> okay, he fades away from this one a little bit. It's freezing cold this, this game. It's freezing cold, man, and he just, you know, Thought he was open, got lucky. All right, don't fade away from it, man, fade to it. Um, let's see here. He didn't get the ball, but man, I like this. I like the feet, all right, take the air out of it. He's already two yards off. Bam, reset, bop, bop. All right, back pylon fade. We teach, we used to teach 10 yard. If you're on the 10 yard line or in, and it's a run, my outside guys are always knowing, hey, he has opportunity to throw the ball on a, on a, on a back pylon fade. All right, so he's just working the release, getting ready to get the ball if, if uh, Trevor threw it to him, okay? Uh, down here, all right, really having to what? Now stride off, all right? Losing a little ground, a little single move. Nothing really special about that, man. Crossed him over, pretty good play there, all right? Uh, up top, bam, quick single, but vert step, hold your line, all right? That corner was really good for La Tech. Nice, nice finish right there. And we do, we actually do a layout drill. We have the landing pads and we practice whenever you get your shoulder pads on, we practice the layout drill. Get a layout and catch passes, all right? And they actually enjoy that, all right? Enjoyed that for Indy, all right? Um, let's see here. <laughs> Taking the ear out of it, single move. I got a soft shoulder, man. Take what they give you, get vertical. I like to press back a little bit more. We say squeeze. Coach Riley says squeeze a lot. All right, squeeze. All right, there's a lot of clips here. You can see just kind of getting back work right there. I'm really fighting to hold, 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 hold. That's what he does well, man. T, just a natural. I love basketball players, man. I need to find more basketball players. This is this is nasty. This is kind of a double move right here. All right, this is to win the natty. All right, just drive. But look, outside shade corner. All right, coming off, taking the air out of it, cross them over. One, two. See that? Sink, little double move. Okay, use a double move. You're, you're, I'm telling you, your receivers aren't going to be patient enough. If you can invest at the line of scrimmage, you'll get the dividends down the field. All right, like invest the line, be patient, practice it. If you don't practice it in practice, you're not going to do it in the game. All right, so then has the hands ready, not quite as good, but bam, get it down, tight swim, get the arm down, bam, good recovery by that corner. All right, go up, go up, good finish. Sean dropped his mouthpiece, no worries. I'm good. All right, let's move on. Let's move on here. I got a lot. Um, redirect. All right. So when it comes to releases, you have all these different kinds of releases you can work. One thing that I that I really um, I, you have to do is you have to teach your guys again. All right, you have a plan. It doesn't always go as planned. All right, so work whatever y'all like to work. All right, work a release. All right, but then have them be thinking, all right, let's say you've worked a release, you've worked a double move, and you're gonna go out. Well, all of a sudden, you, you release, now the DB's still on top of you. All right, don't freak out, be able to redirect, and what, slip back inside, and then from here, you know, what is your route? And be able to talk through, okay, what could you do? You had to go inside, you had to redirect, maybe not ideal, all right? Well, then how do you, how do you act? How do you, how do you respond? Okay, and so these are some, so this is day one, all right, this is fall camp early on in fall camp, all right, I've got a quick single, I've got two quicks, one, two, one, two, bam, all right, I try to release outside of them, this bag represents me, this bag represents the same corner, all right, pretty simple drill, all right, bam, I don't win, that's okay, throw him by, all right, and get inside the bag. Now, what's important for me when I'm watching film is are you a stutter cutter or are you a bent knee guy? Can you cut in one step? And change directions, or are you like I was? You know, <coughs> it had to get. And it took a while. All right, to transition. Okay. All right. So it's pretty simple. This is pretty nice. Pretty smooth. All right. One, two. Bam. I don't win. Boom. Get back in. Stack them. All right. Again. 
one thing, I was talking to Amari Rogers with third round to Green Bay. Like, you know, try not to tax your guys. Work the end of routes. One thing he's telling me is like, Coach, I'm doing a lot of dig routes at the top of the dig, the last three steps of the break point, and I'm running full speed routes with catches. Like when you're doing indie and stuff, you don't want to tax your guys, but you have to be considering, man, I gotta get, I gotta get some full speed catches, like on the run. I got a dude on my back, I gotta freaking run away from him. Can I run full speed and still make the play? Right? Stuff like that. Okay. All right, let me move past this drill. Here's another one, man, with kind of a break point. All right, this is a slide release. I'm gonna show you this next. All right, a slide release. I'm taking him wide. He over he over pursues. I'm gonna stick him, go inside. All right, a little redirect right here. All right, into a comeback. Okay, so I have my ball thrown, comeback. Okay, so just kind of trying to pair. You only have so only have five minutes a lot of times for Indy. So I'm trying to get you know my drill work in. All right, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna you know marry up drills and try to put two or three in one. Okay, redirect. Okay, I don't win, throw them by, it's okay, redirect them. So get the idea here. I wanna release outside, all right? I'm not able to. The corner reacts, this is a redirect. The corner reacts. So I go inside of this corner, right? This bag represents that corner. Then I'm able to throw him by and get to where I wanted to eventually, which is outside. Does that make sense to y'all? Right, that's a redirect. So I don't win outside, Bam, I go inside the corner. I get him to run, and then I get him to flip his hips. Now I'm back outside where I wanted to go originally. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, and then I can run my comeback. I would prefer an outside release to run a comeback, right? That's what I would prefer. So if I can't win initially, I have to redirect, all right? There you go. Uh, this is nice, this is T against AJ, all right? He wants to go, he wants to go uh, inside, he wants to go inside. So he takes him wide. He's patient, he's patient. Didn't really do a whole lot, didn't sell it much. Not a great release, all right? Slaps him in the face, tries to get him to move. Doesn't work, all right? So look, he wants to go inside, AJ counters. Man, not ideal, don't freak out, all right? Get back vertical, now speed, go, right? Transition, transition, good. Now where is he? So again, I wanted to go inside, wouldn't let me. Now I'm here, Let's, so he released outside. Let's say he's low hip, all right? If he's low hip, then what could you do? Ask your guys. Well, coach, if he's low hip, I still want to break inside. Maybe you what? One, two, and then you can win over top. In this case, what? He's even or over top of me. Perfect. That's what I prefer. Now I can throw him by and win back inside on the post. Okay? Bam. All right. Down here. I want to release outside. He tries to take him in. Bam. All right? He, he what? He beats me to the spot. Don't freak out. Get physical. Get physical. Throw him by. Stack him again. Bam, get back outside. Help your quarterback. That's the thing I would tell you. I think as, as receivers, we, we want to run away from corners too much. Like, you have, to, you have to teach your guys that, dude, they're going to call DPI a lot more than they're going to call OPI. Unfortunately, for some of you DPIs. All right? It is what it is. All right? So, like, I would rather us be physical early on to get free down the field. So get, get angry, all right? And, and you have to win. You have to find a way to win, all right? Another one right here. This is uh, two true freshmen right here. Not a great release, all right? Not a great release. That, you know, just indecisive, not really moving them a whole lot. But I'll say this, like, hey, you want to go outside? Just be physical, all right? Take them there. And then just do the rest and then recruit DNA. All right. Now, all right, this is a release. Okay, the slide release. So let me say this to y'all. All right. I'm a young guy. When I got promoted, I did a lot of studying. I knew I had, I learned a lot. So I started typing up, okay, how would I teach my single move? How would I teach my double move? I have all my Word documents and I have everything typed out. Guess what? After one year, I said, damn, that sucks. Like, that's not really what I taught. That's not good at all. I need, so like, I'm always trying to grow. All right. And so one thing that I did is I came across some guys online. There's a lot of great stuff online. Like, I, I, will, I will take stuff from, from guys all the time. Sideline hustle, I mean, you name it. Like, they get, there's some good stuff out there. There's a lot of crappy stuff out there, too. Like, really, really bad stuff, all right? But you know, you know as coaches, this is not going to be helpful for my guys. I don't need to drill this. This is stupid, all right? All the footwork and fancy stuff, is, it's not football, but, you know, sometimes it is. Now, the slide release, all right, let me say this. This is something I want to share with you all. A little, little newer, you see it, you know, you see the split release with Devontae. He's doing the split stuff, 
pretty simple stuff that's good. I'm trying to learn more about that. Now the slide release is just another opportunity, another way to move a defender. All right, you've seen it a little bit, and I'll explain it as I go, all right, and not get into the weeds too much. But a slide release is basically, if I have an outside, let's say the ball's to my right, and I prefer an outside release versus an outside leverage guy, well then as you know, you probably heard before, the releases is, man, I really want to target a yard outside of him and a yard past him. Like, I, if I want to go that way, well then I don't need to run down the center of him. I need to what? I need to attack his outside hand, all right? So imagine this corner is literally here. Right? And now if I want to go this way, well then don't attack him here, attack him a yard outside of him. Right? And so the slide release is an opportunity to really when the ball snap to quickly try to win leverage. Alright? And then you read what he does. Alright, so it takes drills. It, it takes it takes repetition, going back to habits. It takes doing it over and over and over again. Alright, so I'll explain this and, and I'll show my guys this stuff. Like, do you show your guys <coughs> some college stuff? Do you show your guys some NFL stuff? Hopefully you do. All right, I got Coach Tane here. Artavis Scott's my GA, he's awesome. He makes cups all the time of NFL stuff. And, he, and guys, I'll come into my meeting room after special teams and guys that aren't on punt coverage or whatever, they're in there watching some NFL stuff that he put together. All right, and so this is a slide release. Pretty simple. It's almost like what? Taking the air out of the defender but attacking his outside half more and setting him up with some, with some patience. All right, and then a little one, two at the top. All right, and so that's something I show my guys, okay? This is, so watch, right now, bam, he's going to take that back foot, whatever. You can take your front foot. Let your guys figure out what works for them. All right, so this is a slide, bam, all right? And he stays, he prefers to go back inside, but he stays on his inside half a little bit. So what? What do you do? you got to teach them this, and I'll show you here in a bit. You have to one to them to win back inside. All right, let's say you slide him, and he stays on your inside half. Leave him there. Just one. Just leave him there. All right? So here it is. Watch. He did, he, he's not quite far enough. So what does he do? A little shimmy. It's subtle, guys. Right there. Bam. All right. So this is kind of the first day I teach. All right? First day I teach slide. All right? I get these little hexagon deals, and I show them that basically, all right, I want you to imagine the corner. Sometimes you'll see Amari, you'll see him. Sometimes the corner's tight on you, and you can slide him laterally. All right, imagine here the corner's a little soft, all right, so you're able to what? You're able to slide laterally, but also gain some ground in it. So I put the hexagons here, and they're, yeah, their eyes are down initially, just teaching them what? One, two, one, two. I want to work with a stagger. I want to work with a little bit of a stagger, right? A little bit of a stagger is what I teach, okay? And so here, one, two, three, all right? One, two, one, two, bam. Now this one is what? I want to go outside. I work the slide, he stayed on my inside half, so what? Leave him there to go outside. Bam, now get a ball, run through it, run through the catch. One, two, three, four, bam, bam. All right, let's see a little bit more hip shift, a little more violence. Now this is Amari working the slide. Now he overplays it. Now he overplays it, and I'm almost gonna stick him once to what? To win back inside. He really widened with me, great. Let him go ahead and continue with his momentum. Stick him once, basically just single move it. And then now here, Amari's going to work, all right? He stays on the inside half, one, two, all right? Working back outside, you can see the hands, Amari's going to be ready to work here. And you can see it slightly, bam, tight swim, get the arm down, stack, all right? All right, this is uh, something I did this week. This is Monday, all right? This is bow number 80 for us, all right? He's here, I want to widen him, bam, all right? Get him to this point. All right, one, two, slam, okay? Slide him, this is uh, my redshirt freshman, Cole Turner, all right, bam. One, two, all right, know when to be violent with your hands. If you're going with your feet, if you can win with your feet, great, I don't need hands. Win with your feet. If hands are necessary, use your hands. Another thing that I would tell y'all, all right, and this is uh, from um, Wake Forest receiver coach. I saw him at the clinic and he was kind enough to talk to me. You know, one thing, like, a lot of times a corner, like let's say I'm the corner and the ball's in here, I have an outside release. What hand do I want to throw? Right? So the problem with receivers is I've been teaching a ton of club rip, club swim. You don't really need to be doing as much of that. What I need to be doing is just working. If I'm a receiver and I know he's doing this, well, I don't need to use this right hand. Just use the inside hand, right? And so just work, just work. If I'm, if I'm a receiver, don't worry so much about this anymore. Once I've won the outside half, now everything's just here, right? Wide, club, 
the left inside and keeping the outside on three. So use more of that. Be practicing more of the inside hand only. All right, and keeping the outside on three. All right. This is a uh, tone, bam, widen them, and two. Okay, so that's something we worked, and uh, that's my true freshman here, Noble, from Texas, man. Good little player, got some good feet, pop, bam. All right. Now, one thing, another, another thing I want y'all to teach, because when the guys come up, uh, show up here, all right, I've, I've released them. There's my corner. Why would you tuck the ball in the left arm? Why would you do that? Because he's recovered, now he's raking, and now the ball's out. On inside breaking routes, tuck the ball in the near arm. Well, guess what? He's left-handed. No one's ever taught him that. So every time he gets the ball, he tucks in the left arm. But we've got corners that recover, and now the ball's gone. All right? So those are things that um, you got to work. Okay? This is pretty good here by Spec. Bam, get out there. Bop. Suddenness, quickness. All right? Um, this is Amari working it. Now he's a little flatter. Look, he ain't losing no ground, so Amari's going to work laterally. Bop. Bam. I have a, he has a corner out, and he knows he wants to release outside. Bam. Take him. Now, vert step. Bam. A little bit of eyes. A little bit of eyes. Subtle. Stick him. All right. Come back downhill. Get friendly. All right. Another one here. Now he's losing ground. So now what? I can take it. I can take it further downfield. I have a slant. Bop. All right. I want to go outside again. I got a corner route. Look, guys. He's half a yard down the field. Bam. But he's moved him enough inside to win back inside. Get vertical. Save some room. All right, now this one's nice. All right, he has a seam here. I don't like seams in one-on-one, -on -one, but hey, we caught it. All right, um, he's gonna take him wide. All right, he doesn't react. This is the drill we did, right? He let, he's here, crap. All right, so then what? Leave him there, so watch. One, two, not, not pretty, but it works. Now he's on his heels, sitting in the seat, bam. Now speed past him, and then just make the play. It's always nice you can use the drill because they make the catch. I mean, there's a lot of them that they don't, you know, it sucks. All right, uh, up top, all right, walk on, walk on, all right? Man, I love it. Jackson Crosby, I don't know, some of y'all know that name? Hey, man, hey, look, hey, he's using it. What we worked at, this is literally the same day, same day we installed it. This is Monday's practice. Take him wide. Look, he's on his inside half a little bit more. This is the next level, and actually we didn't drill it, but I showed him, I showed him the drill that somebody else was coaching before I went up to practice, all right? So he's in the slide. Guess what, I want to run the slant. Well, crap, he's right here. Well, guess what, take him one more step. Bye -bye. Take him one more, give him a little bit more influence and push him vertical. Make him think that you brought the slide into the go. Sell the go, right? So watch, it's pretty subtle. Here it is, slide, he's still on the outside half. And then one more little step right there. Bop, and has the hand ready. All right, didn't get the ball, but it was pretty. All right, another walk on. Just using their stuff right here. All right. <laughs> Hampton Earl. All right. Here we go. Watch this. This he has a little in route, but he's, he's got time to be patient too. All right. He's the last read. I'm gonna show you all a little, little uh, a nice. Uh, this is a this is a great concept. All right. Have your single receiver block the corner. Three release your back. Read your will. If the will doesn't scream right now to cover him, throw it to him right now one on one. All right, if the wheel expands, you have the drag route, all right, that's working across the field. This is a yes, no, one-on-one, -on -one, all right? Sky route, all right? If you like Antonio on the slot right here, one-on-one, -on -one, take it. All right, if not, then this is your last read, all right? He moves with it, bam, all right? Throws that late, but watch, bam, boop. He's under inside half, one more little move vertical, all right, sell it. All right, just suddenness, okay? Um, this is sweet. This is uh, the same day, one-on-ones. He's gonna work the slide. This is cold. All right, move him, move him off the spot. He has a stop route. A stop route's much like a curl. I prefer an outside release on a curl, all right, versus man. Why? Because I can sell speed and I can throw by. It's a lot harder to win inside. Same thing with a stop route. A stop route is literally I'm outside, and what? I'm coming right back down my stem, all right? Ankle eye, I've said this last time, Gunnar Brewer taught me this. All right, imagine you have an eye on your ankle. That, your plant step, when I teach break points, I gotta hurry up, goodness. Punch, gather, plant, punch, gather, plant, punch, gather, plant, That's, I have a three-step break. Punch, gather, step, plant, step. All right, but if I'm coming back down my stem, well, then my ankle better be planted 
and, and pointing toward where I want to go. So if it's a stop route, then literally here's my ankle right here, all right? I better plant, so punch, gather, plant. My eye better be back down my stem if I want to go that way. Punch, gather, plant. So literally you're turning like that. I got to show you a drill. All right, let's go. All right, wait, crap, you done went outside. That's all right. This is kind of a redirect, right? Bam, now watch. Ver 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 vertical speed, bam. All right, best, best, best break point wins. Best break point wins. At this point, I don't got to worry about throwing by. Just have a good break point, come back down my stem. All right, good ball. I'm pretty excited. I, I chase my guy all the time, man. All right. Um, all right, this is pat and go. So look, same, same practice. I had five minutes to work. They had one rep each side, all right, and Indy with me. So we went pat and go. So I said, guys, every time you're up on slants or goes, you're going to work the slide. All right, there's a slide on the go. Slide, go. All right, slide, go. Bam. All right, anyway. Um, one I'll show you. I'm not going to spend any time on this, actually. But hey, just be physical. I call this a slam and go. It's a change up. If you got a bully corner on, hey, get pissed at him. All right, get pissed at him. Boom, run through his chest and be ready to play with hands if he tries to get physical with you. Slam and go. All right, I don't have time for that. Um, they, and they use it, man. They use it. Shoot, I'm already using it in the senior bowl. All right, um, I'll show you this. It's pretty fun. You can use it for blocking, too. All right, bop. All right, have some fun with that. Okay. I'll show you the other one too. Bop. There it is. Okay. Do block here some too. All right. In phase. All right. You got turbulence. You got turbulence. All right. Um, into the storm, man. Expect it. Two minutes. No, sir. I ain't. All right. Um, this is a drill. Like, so imagine you work a release and you got a hand on you. You got to be able to play through pressure and still lean into it. And so I've kind of got a DB kind of getting his last push on you. All right. This is early on in fall camp. All right. Plant, get the arm off, and vert step at the same time. All right, I like this one. All right, this is a drill where literally you partner up and you're running. Let's say you've already released, you're, you're in phase. You puts a hand on your hip, you're swatted down. All right, you puts a hand on your shoulder. All right, you're shedding it, and your eyes are always forward. And you're just reacting to it. And then you stack them, and then you catch the ball. So just kind of working hands. I don't gotta, I don't gotta look at my DB. I just react to it. Never let another man put his hands on you. All right, so freaking get his hands off. No free rides. All right, no free rides. Now this one's right here. All right, I work a release. All right, and then I'm the DB running with him, and then he waits. He waits till I put a hand on him. If I put it low, club it, shed it high. All right. So watch. I'll say this about shed. All right. One thing I was taught: if you're running down the field, you don't have as much range of motion with your shed right here. Right. So you shed with the elbow. You pull the elbow up and back down. All right. Get the arm up. That's you're gonna you don't have range of motion. All right. And then listen, all right, break points and ball drills, a lot of stuff I'm not going to read through. All right, but man, all right, teach a three-step break. I teach a three-step break. Some people say you can break in two. I don't believe it because ultimately if you're watching slow it down, it's really three. All right, some, sometimes it's four. All right, I'm not going to be a stickler, but I want to see one big, two little. Bam, bam, bam. All right, this is day one. All right, they're doing um, the V drill, which is awesome. I love it. But this is easy. Now watch. When I'm, when I'm running a break point, I never look in the ground. So have your guys just day one, all right, run a break point and be able to go. It's unbelievable how few can really go run and go one, two, three, and plant. They can't do it, like day one. So teach them and then have their eyes up and they put a, a number up, all right? So they say, okay, one, two, three, two, and they run the route. They right? run the 45, they run the 90. That's T drill. The feel it drill, I love this. Last thing, we're gonna go, okay, Jordan, thanks. All right. So I got, so again, this is me. This is our, our team back in Coach Sweeney. So Coach Sweeney's done this, all right? I, I carried with me, all right? The feel it drill, all right? So I'm gonna run, all right? And then it's one, two, three, and literally feel the pipe, feel the pylon, feel the yard marker, feel it, keep your eyes up, and then come out of your break. So we teach the feel it drill, why? Almost like a stance to start, I better be able to have chest over knee, knee over toe, all right? In my break point as well, all right? You better pan. I've had surgery on both knees. Unfortunately, it kind of takes that, I think, to run good routes. But, man, you better have chest over knee, all right? Better have it, knee over toe. All right, keep those eyes up. Um, just teach them punch, gather, plant, punch, gather, plant. All right, I love this one. All right, guys, contested catches, last thing, contested catches. Are you doing that enough? All right, it's hard in Indy. But, look, I take my, my scout team. I'm working three-step break. Ready? One, two, three. Back around. One, two, three. And then Drake drill. He's on your back. You better feel that. All right, I could go on and on, man. I have more time tonight. Really appreciate it, guys. Love, it. Love this position, man. It's an art. It's an art, all right? And it made it just coach the crap out of it. 
All right, teacher, guys, man, use terminology that's succinct and easy to memorize and have some fun with it, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.